our top story coming from the Indo-Pacific. Right. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has begun the second leg of his three-nation tour today. Narendra Modi, who was in Papua New Guinea, held bilateral talks with a Prime Minister, James Murape. Today, the Indian Prime Minister arrived in the country on Sunday after attending the G7 summit in Hiroshima. Yes, it's a critical visit there by the Indian Prime Minister. This is the first time an Indian Prime Minister is visiting Papua New Guinea. India is actively seeking to counter Beijing's influence in the Indo-Pacific. Prime Minister Modi landed in the nation's capital port, Morse on Sunday night. Uh, the Prime Minister was met by a gun salute and traditional dancers. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister even, even extended his hand to touch Prime Minister Narendra Modi's feet. In the Indian tradition, the gesture is meant to show respect to elders and receiving their blessings. As per reports, China has been pouring money into countries in the Pacific. This has alarmed New Delhi and its allies in the Quad. New Delhi is increasing its engagement with Pacific Islands. This is due to their strategic location and fears that China could dominate the region. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the third summit of the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation or the FIPIC, which is currently underway. Post the summit, bilateral talks have been scheduled between the participating countries as well. आपकी तरह हम मल्टीलेटरलिज्म में विश्वास रखते हैं, free, open और inclusive Indo-Pacific का समर्थन करते हैं, सभी देशों की संप्रभुता और अखंडता को सम्मान करते हैं ग्लोबल साउथ की आवाज भी यूएन सुरक्षा परिषद में बुलंद बुलंदी से उठनी चाहिए इसके लिए अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संस्थाओं का सुधार हमारी साझा प्राथमिकता होनी चाहिए now, after the summit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with scholars from the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program before departing for Sydney, where he is scheduled to spend the next two days. Now, what is the significance of this summit we have, Rohit, with a rather thorough explainer. Over to you now, Rohit. Thanks, Him. So, what is the importance of the Pacific Islands nations and why is India and US and other allies courting these nations? Let's uh, talk about that. First, this engagement with these uh, 14 island countries is a part of India's Act East policy. So that is one of the major centerpieces of Prime Minister Modi's policy, Act East, uh, Act East policy, and this engagement is part of that. India has in fact been engaging with these countries mainly through development assistance under South-South cooperation. And India's engagements with Pacific Islands is part of New Delhi's strategy to maneuver through the Indo-Pacific region. Now, what else? It is also an attempt to counter China's Indo-Pacific domination. Remember, these have been concerns of China's growing influence in the region and this outreach is part of countering China's assertiveness in the region. China has, over the past few years, growing its economic and military activity in the Pacific. So India is looking at not just in the Indian Ocean region but beyond into the Pacific region as well to counter China's influence. Now, India will be extending assistance in the form of capacity building and loan assistance. So that are the areas that India is currently focusing on. Now, India, remember, is a member of the Quad grouping that also comprises US, Japan and Australia and all these countries are concerned about China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. So India's Pacific Islands uh, outreach 
one of the prominent issues over here is China's influence. Now, why is Papua New Guinea so important? Why is that country key to countering China? Let's take you through those points. Now, Papua New Guinea is being quoted by the United States and its allies. And again, the focus here is China. Why? Because in 2018, Xi Jinping visited Port Moresby, that's the capital of Papua New Guinea, amid much fanfare over there. Uh, if you remember the pictures, there were flags of China that were hoisted across the capital and his motorcade whizzed past the welcoming crowds over there. Now, something that the world was watching in 2018. Now, US and Australia are concerned about growing Chinese investments in Papua New Guinea. Both these countries and India part of the quad grouping remember that now can, there are concerns over China trying to set up a military outpost in that island nation now what what did this prompt this prompted US to propose setting up of a joint naval facility on the Manus Island which is part of Papua New Guinea this is something that US proposed now Biden remember was scheduled to visit Papua New Guinea he would have become the first sitting US president to visit Papua New Guinea in at least a century but that visit was cancelled due to domestic issues remember that the, the debt ceiling deadlock the talks are deadlocked at the moment so because of that Biden had to cancel that visit he returned to United States from Japan but he was scheduled to visit Papua New Guinea after his G7 meeting in Japan now, Blinken is, remember, in Papua New Guinea as a U.S. representative over there. He is expected to sign a security agreement. So even United States looking at Papua New Guinea as key to countering China. Both India, the United States and the other Quad leaders are concerned about China's growing influence. And Papua New Guinea seems of strategic importance to counter China's influence. Let's go across uh, to our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidhan Sebel, who is in Sydney, who is joining us right now. Uh, uh, Sidhan, it's a beautiful morning there. We can see Opera House uh, behind you. Tell us about this Prime Minister's visit to Papua New Guinea. Why is it that so important vis-a-vis uh, -vis China? Well, the Pacific nations uh, and the region have been seen as an area of geopolitical contestation between China, US uh, and of course Australia which sees the Pacific as its own backyard. Now India has had a long-standing relationship with the Pacific not only in terms of providing capacity building but also in terms of the diaspora. India has a huge diaspora in Fiji. In fact, uh, uh, just a few weeks ago the uh, Fijian Prime Minister apologized for the coup of 1980s uh, uh, that of course is uh, an attempt to regain trust with New Delhi but essentially uh, the Indian Prime Minister's visit to Pacific to uh, Papua New Guinea for the Pacific meet is uh, a message that India wants to send that um, India is the voice of the global south uh, that has been particularly emphasized by India since last few months even as it gets ready to host the G20 summit in September. Now we heard the Prime Minister's speech in Papua New Guinea in which he uh, mentioned that India will make sure that, that the aspiration of the global south uh, is kept in front of the world by the Indian presidency of the G20. So essentially India wants to do two things. First, uh, regain its uh, uh, forte, its uh, its relationship with the Pacific and secondly also use this platform as an opportunity to showcase itself as a leader of the global south something that the Indian Prime Minister also did in Hiroshima at the G7 summit. Right Siddhant of course this as we know is the second leg of his three nation visit given that he's going to Australia next what can you tell us of the significance of that visit as well and the engagements that have been scheduled? Well, the Indian Prime Minister travels to Australia from Papua Guinea and that will be the last leg of his three country visit. Now, we know that so far, whether it's uh, in Japan or Papua New Guinea, the focus has been multilateral as the Indian Prime Minister addressed the G7 Outreach Summit and the Pacific meet. But Australia will be about a bilateral visit to showcase the strong relationship between the two countries who have uh, been the main supporter of uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific 
Indo-Pacific. Uh, there will be hard diplomacy focusing on Indo-Pacific deliverables on how both countries can work together, especially when it comes to military exchanges. Uh, we know that later this year, uh, Sydney will be hosting uh, the Malabar exercises, even though they are not seen as part of the Quad, quad but it is uh, participation of all the Quad uh, countries, the four Quad countries. And the second will be the mega diaspora event. Now, Australia is a huge Indian diaspora. In fact, uh, since the time we have landed till the point we are doing live, we have met every second person uh, who is here uh, who is an Indian origin or an Indian person. So essentially to make sure that this people to people bridge between the two countries is celebrated, the Indian Prime Minister is doing a mega diaspora event, something on the lines of the Madison Square Garden and that is expected to be a major headline. It's already a major headline in the Australian newspapers today. All right. Well, Sidhan, thank you so much for bringing us the latest on that. We'll, of course, continue to track the developments very closely with you in Sydney, of course.